It's the slogan of the era, right? Influences. It's a new phenomenon. In, I mean, in social media, it's a new phenomenon. Historically, influences have always been there. But now it's accessible to everyone. A man sits in his apartment in the Arab Emirates or in Lahore or in London or in Islamabad and he's bought this equipment and he's got his camera and he's now become a social societal influencer and then he'll buy this uh, selfie stick and he'll buy the camera and video and walk around you know streets or even sit in his car because that seems to be the fashion now sit in your car put your camera in the corner and you just talk whatever you want to talk mostly nonsense but they believe that they're influencing as far as Islam is concerned da'wah is left to the du'at who understand salafiyyah and the aqidah salafiyyah meaning that they understand and they have studied the books of the salaf in aqidah so they know their creed they know the belief so they have studied for example Usul sunnah of Ahmad ibn Hanbal and they know it and they understand it they have read for example Sharh sunnah of Al-Muzni wa Al-Barbahari they have studied Al-Aqidah al of Ibn Taymiyyah or Kitab Al-Iman and they have read the seerah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam authentically whether it be Ibn Hisham with its checkings or with those who have mentioned that which is correct from that which is incorrect in its chains and so on or the seerah of Ibn Kathir meaning Ibn Kathir seerah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Fusul Wazad Al-Ma'ad of Ibn Qayyim and they have read and understood Kitab Al-Tawheed of Shaykh Al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab and they have studied and they understand Thalathul Usul wa Adillatuha the three fundamental principles of Shaykh Al-Islam and their proofs Qaidul Arba, Usul Sitta Kashf Al-Shubahat, Masal Al-Jahiliya and they understand the fatawa of the scholars whether it be Ibn Taymiyyah or whether it be Al-Mughni meaning Ibn Qudama and his collection of the rulings in fiqh or as shawkani's work, Nail Nail al-Altar and likewise the books of tafsir that he is acquainted with them whether it be Abdul Rahman Sa'di or Muhammad Amin Shanqiti or Ibn Kathir and likewise that he knows the methodology of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a in every age that it is not altered. And he understands the writings and the books of Shaykh Ibn Baz, Ibn Thaymeen, Al Albani, Muqbil, Abdul Muhsin, Rabi al Madkhali, Fawzan, and others. This is the one who gives da'wah. This is the one who goes out there and invites the people. Not the one who just picks up a selfie stick and starts talking. And he goes to the restaurant. And he says that I am Salafi. So then all the Salafis follow him. You know, he's trying different foods and laughing and joking. This is not what the deen calls to. This is not what the deen calls to. So there are two affairs here to be looked at. The da'wah is given by those who understand Salafiyyah and tread the way of the Salaf in ilm. Is this the way of the Salaf in ilm? What they do when they go to restaurants and cafes or I don't know where in the street and they're just walking around, fooling around, jumping around, cracking jokes. And that's the whole of what they do. And they say we are influencers. So then, People, of, people who are actually upon the sunnah, they recognize him, maybe he's a Salafi, and they start following him. And then they have, and then they, they will text us and WhatsApp us or phone us and say, uh, Ustad, is it okay to follow him because he's Salafi? Why? Because he's taken the label of Salafi. And fa'lam is Salafi. 
I'm not stripping him of Salafiya, but that is not da'wah. That is not what we busy the people with. It should not be opened. These are entertainers. They call themselves influencers, but in reality they're doing entertainment. And they say, well at least it's halal entertainment. You're busying the people with this nonsense and this is how you make money. My advice to them is, get off social media. Open the avenue for the people to go to the mashayikh. And go to the scholars, and go to the teachers. Why are they watching you? Eating a burger. Or doing weight training in a gym. Or posing in some coffee shop. Whilst you're having your hair cut somewhere else. How is that the tarbiyah Islamiyah? Is this what we want our children to be watching? Then they are those who ascribe themselves to ilm, but they don't have anything to do with ilm. So they say that we are influencers, and they are influencers who entertain at the same time. But they have not studied, nor do they read, nor do the scholars know them. And a lot of the time, this is really self-glorification. They want their image out there. They want their picture out there. They want their video out there. But they are not tullab al-ilm. A talib ilm will sit in a dars and teach his people, even if it is sent out on video live. I have no, you know, people might say, oh, that's because you hold a position against video. I don't actually. If a video is made of an alim or a sheikh or a strong student of knowledge, and by making the video and broadcasting it elsewhere, because if they see something, it has a greater effect upon the heart that I want to see how the sheikh or the student of knowledge or this ustad, you know, how he's behaving as he's teaching, how he's interacting, because that will affect me. I have no issue with this. That is not the same as what these people are doing. Because what they are doing is entertainment. And they call themselves influencers. And in reality, that is not the tarbiyah. If you look at the manhaj of Sheikh al-Albani, you know, which has become famous, even though all of the scholars are on it, but he actually, the way that he articulated it, is something that has stuck into the minds and the souls of the people. Because he defined it in two words, tasfiyah wa tarbiyah. So what you're doing, and people are trying to justify these so-called influencers and entertainers, how does that fit into Sheikh al-Albani's methodology, if you read it in detail? Or if you listen to the audience of Sheikh al-Albani, and he talks about tasfiyah and tarbiyah. The tarbiyah of the new generation, and the tasfiyah, purification of the religion, from that which is ascribed to it, that is not from it. Whether it be in aqidah, purify the religion from the false aqaid. Purify the sunnah from mawdu'at, from the hadith that are fabricated and weak. Purify the seerah, of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the seer and the biographies of the early Salaf from that which is attributed to them that is false this is all purification purify the deen from that which is bid'ah whether it be the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam demonstrations in the street calling the people to give zakat to political parties so they can be elected into power all of these are bid'ah these are innovations. So Shaykh al-Albani is talking about a process of tasfiya. Where does that fall? What you are doing, where is that? Dawah begins with tasfiya. Where are you influencers and entertainers in that? That is, You have no share in that. Because you haven't studied. You haven't studied. You haven't studied wasatiyah, kitab al-tawheed. Thalathatul usul, qawaidul araba, usul al-sunnah, sharh al-sunnah. Kitab al-Iman, Kitab al-Tawheed in Bukhari, Kitab al-Sunnah ibn Majah, Kitab al-Sunnah in Abu Dawood, Ha'iyah bin Abu Dawood al-Sijistani, Lamiyah, Mimiyah, Nuniyah. You haven't studied anything. You haven't read the books of Fatawa, nor the Shuruhat of the, of the books of Aqidah, the explanations of Kitab al-Tawheed of Ibn Uthaymeen, explanation of Al-Wasatiyah by Khalil Harras. Aqidah al-Tahawiyah with the explanation of Fawzan. You haven't studied any of that. So where's your tasfiyah? You don't have it yourself. Tarbiyah, let 
Where do we even start with tarbiyah? Because now you have a purified religion. How do you cultivate the next generation upon that pure Islam that Al Mustafa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon? What, by going to a burger bar? And laughing and joking? And then hoping one million people watch your TikTok? Or watch your Instagram? Or watch your YouTube video? Because you know that everyone who views it, you get some money. So let me do something even more outrageous next time. Isn't that it? The more outrageous I am, the more controversial I am, the more hits I'll get, the more views I'll get, the more people visit, the more pennies come into my account. That's what you see. And these are people who are, you know, outwardly looking there, upon, you know, they're upon iltizam, they pray, they fast, they have beards, you know, they dress properly. But that's not the tarbiyah that you want to give to your children. So whether they praise me or don't praise me, I don't care. You know, flattery doesn't mean anything to me. Follow the haqq. Whether you praise maktaba salafi or whether you disrespect them, that doesn't bother me. Follow the haqq. Speak the truth. Learn your deen. If you have no knowledge, stop talking. Muhammad ibn Sirin said, indeed this knowledge is religion. So look to whom you're taking your knowledge from. You're going to take your knowledge from entertainers and influencers who are cracking jokes and their whole life is like this. Where do you think that is going in terms of tarbiyah? If you look at Gen Z and look how much we discussed Gen Z, Generation Z and where they are going. These are the people who are telling them, we're going to influence you correctly. This is influenced correctly. Al-Albani is influenced that is correct. Muqbil is influenced that is correct. Fawzan is influenced that is correct. Bin Baz is influenced that is correct for this generation. Rabi al-Madkhali, Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Ahmed al-Najmi, Zayd al-Madkhali. These are the scholars of Ahlul Hadith. The scholars of Sunnah, Salafiyya. These are the ones that we should be looking and saying to our children, you should be influenced by them. They are the imams of the era. Luhaydan, Ubaid al-Jabari. So now when, you know, the mind boggles, right, that there are millions of people viewing these TikTok entertainers. You know, slash influences millions of people but no one's reading kitab tawheed or very few pe- the people who are watching that are not reading kitab tawheed they are not reading they are not sitting in the durus of the tulab al-ilm in the west or the tulab al-ilm in the east or the tulab al-ilm in the gulf countries or the mashayikh and the ulama they're not listening to them they're too busy on these you know or what he's, look he's having a funny haircut Oh look, he's making us laugh while he's having a cake and drinking his coffee. Look, he's got his mates with him. Oh, he's got new trainers on. That's the influence. These are influences. Then one day they'll mention a scholar. And then you find all of these Salafis. Ustad, should we follow him? Ustad, he praises the Salafis. So everyone who praises the Salafis, you're going to take knowledge from. Everyone who's Salafi, you're going to take knowledge from. Just because he's Salafi. Hakikatan he's Salafi. But is he worthy of taking knowledge from? Knowledge is taken from the people who have ilm. From those who have studied and understand the deen. They understand tahara, they understand salah, they understand zakah, they understand saum, they understand hajj. They understand the deen of Allah, they know tawheed, they know the manhaj of Ahlul Sunnah. They know how to deal with prevalent affairs that are taking place in society. They know how to deal with demonstrations. And they will speak out. What is it? Whilst we're talking about stop demonstrating, stop causing facade, stop rebelling against the rulers, they're having burger and coffee and cake. And a million people are watching that instead of listening to what the people of knowledge have to say. And it is a sad state of affairs that you're looking for an audio of Ibn Uthaymeen and 800 people have heard it. You look at this influencer having burger and fries and 3 million people have watched it. 
Isn't that a sad state of affairs? They are not aiding the issue. They are not aiding our deen. In fact, they are leading our youth, our children astray. Why? Because the parent thinks to himself, well, it's better than watching a movie. We're always talking in negatives. How's your son? MashaAllah, he doesn't drink. How's your son? How's your daughter? MashaAllah, she doesn't go to the movies. That's tazkiyah these days. That is a tazkiyah these days. In our day, MashaAllah, he went to sit with Sheikh Muqbil and he was there for one year. MashaAllah, he went to Riyadh and he sat in every dars of Fawzan for three years. MashaAllah, he was in Medina. And every time he makes Umrah, uh, in Mecca, he goes to Medina and sat in the durus of Sheikh Ubaid. Or Sheikh Rabi' in those days. Or Sheikh Ali Nasr or Sheikh Abdul Muhsin. Right? These are things that are positive. MashaAllah, he, he studied Aqidatul Wasitiyah in the, in the Dars of Fulan from the students of knowledge in the West, from the Mashaykh, from the elder brothers. He completed the whole of Wasitiyah, or he completed the whole of Kitab al Tawheed. Now you can say he's done something. When you go to a parent and say, Yeah, yeah, he doesn't smoke, MashaAllah. Good kid. He doesn't listen to music. That should be the norm. That should be a given. Which means there is something in the tarbiyah of our children that we are lacking. Something is missing. We have a duty to ourselves primarily. And we have a duty to our children, our families, our communities. These entertainers and influencers are not helping us. You want to know how to influence? Go and listen to Rabia. Go and listen to Fawzan. Go and listen to Bin Baz. Go and listen to Ibn Uthaymeen, Ahmed al-Najmi, Muqbil bin Hadi, Zayd al-Madkhali, Ubaid al-Jabari, Abdul Mahsin al-Abbad. They are the scholars of our time. Read their books. They're translated into how many dozens of languages. In Urdu you have the books of Sheikh bin Baz, Al-Albani, Ibn Uthaymeen, Rabi al-Madkhali, Abdul Mahsin al-Abbad, in Arabic. Ilm is your... The world is your oyster, as they say. Subhanallah. What are we doing wasting our lives with these influences? I don't care if they're Salafi. You're Salafi, alhamdulillah, you're Salafi, you're my brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. But you are not a person of knowledge. Knowledge should not be sought from you. You need to shut down your entertainment channel and make money in a better way. Stop giving our children bad tarbiyah. I don't want my child growing up looking at you as an example. I want them looking at Muqbil, Rabi'i, Ubaid, Fawzan, Al-Albani. Even before that, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Qudama, Barbahari, Bukhari, Ibn Majah, Abu Dawood, Malik, Shafi'i, Sufyan al-Thawri, Fudayl ibn Iyad, and then the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. That's their example and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do they need to watch you having a haircut? And walking around posing with your selfie stick. Leave that to them, to the Hizbiyon. Your duty my brother, go to the dars. Learn your deen. Learn your deen, barakallahu feekum. And you know they are Hizbis who look for the smallest entry point to get into our Salafi communities. So what they do is, these are your influencers, stroke entertainers. So they have hundreds of thousands or even millions of views on their TikTok. Then when you look into their background, they're linked to the Hizbi, innovated, Ikhwani type of organizations, praising them, following them, supporting them. And at the same time, they'll praise and support the Salafis. Because when they praise and support the Salafis, Salafis are people who love each other. Right? We have mahabba for each other. Alim, 
or the common Salafi. We love each other. Regardless. So when they see that, they say, oh look, he praised the Salafis. But when, when you look just behind, you know, because the thing about the internet and social media is, you are known by your companions and that's easy to look at. Let's look at who they're following. So they say, oh, but they praise the Salafis. Yeah, but he also works with that hizb, with that party, with that group that is ikhwani, in opposition to the da'wah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So just because he praises some of the people of truth, and then on the other side he praises those sects of misguidance and innovation. So what's he doing? He wants approval and validation from everyone. So the Ikhwani will say, he's with us. The Sufi will say, he's with us. The political agitators, they'll say, he's with us. The Jama'at of Tajmir, those Jama'as that just want to unite the people upon nothing, they will say, he's with us. And some of the Masakeen Salafis will say, he's with us. He is carrying you into misguidance. So you have to be careful. Because what they need is an entry point. Let me say something nice about Sheikh Rabi. Let me say something nice about Sheikh Fulan. Let me say something. But in the background, you're also saying nice things about people are leading people astray. This is why I say these entertainers, influencers, there's no need for them. We have to love the In Pakistan, in Britain, in America, in Canada, we have Mashaikh and strong ulama in the Gulf, you know, in, in the Mamlaka, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in Medina, in Riyadh, in other places. These are the ones who are giving knowledge. We direct the people towards them. And keep away from these types of people. Barakallahu feekum. It is not good tarbiyah. Wallahu ta'ala. As I say, this is nasiha. This is not. I don't deny that they're Salafi. I don't deny that. But this is not the tarbiyah that is required. Barakallahu feekum.